Me, 40M, and my wife, 37F, have been married for 10 years, and we recently celebrated our anniversary. We have two wonderful kids together. Since the beginning of the year, things have been off between us. She's been acting strangely since the beginning of the year irritable, avoiding me, and we haven't been intimate much. Some days she's happy, some others fully irritated. Sometimes she's a great mother to our kids, some other times she wishes they had never been born. Recently, I had to go to the urologist for a urinary tract infection, and the test suggested it might be an STD. This was a huge shock because I've never been with anyone other than my wife since we started dating. Right now, she's away at a so-called business seminar, of which I talked about in a different post. She has been keeping diaries for over a decade, and out of desperation, I read them for the first time ever. It turns out she's been having multiple sexual partners for the past two years. In particular, there was one affair that lasted over a year, and it seems part of her irritability was due to her lover moving on to someone else. I also discovered she has a hidden Tinder account too and been meeting with other men regularly. I am devastated beyond words. I feel lost and unsure of what to do, especially since we have two little kids who mean the world to me. I need some advice on how to handle this situation. Should I confront her immediately? Should I consult a lawyer first? How do I even begin to process this betrayal and protect my kids through all of this? Thank you for any guidance you can offer in this incredibly difficult time. Additional information from OP. Thank you for all the comments. As everyone's suggesting, I'll try to consult discreetly with a lawyer ASAP, gather as much evidence as I can, get the STD treated, and, as painful as it is, perform paternity tests on my kids. To be honest, I'm a complete mess right now and cannot think properly. All kinds of thoughts are crossing my mind. Part of me still loves her and wants to forgive her, the other is just full of disgust and hatred and wishes I've never even met her at all. I wish I could just disappear right now. Commenter 1. Copies of evidence to lawyer go full and see. Serve her. Don't drink. Work out. Good luck. Commenter 2. Get proof. Get a lawyer. Do what the lawyer says. Commenter 3. Assuming an open marriage has no appeal to you. Take a deep breath and start lifting weights and eating right. These will help you process the emotions in a healthy way instead of drowning in the bottle. Don't say anything to her. Document all evidence. Talk a lawyer first before making any moves. It's probably been happening your entire marriage. Get paternity tests on your kids. Suggest 23 and me as something fun. Plan your next move and execute on it like a divine masculine. Treat the divorce and custody battle like a business negotiation. Keep emotions low. Remember, this is going to extremely traumatizing to your children. Keep their mental health at the forefront always. Do not talk badly about your wife. If she tries to destroy your relationship with them or lay the blame at your feet, just stay calm. Tell them you love them and this is between her and you but you both love them very much and it's nothing they did. Don't tell them about your wife's indiscretions you till they're old enough to handle it, if ever. Update 1. One month later. Thank you all for your invaluable advice and support. It has been a tremendous help during this difficult time. After my last post, my in-laws kindly offered to look after the kids while my wife was away at her seminar. They remain unaware of the turmoil I've been experiencing. I used this time to go through her diaries and take pictures of their contents. Each entry felt like a stab in the back, leaving me in a state of shock and disbelief. I just don't recognize anymore the person I thought I knew and loved for over a decade. To avoid going into too much detail, the revelations in the diaries would make any movie or TV series I've ever seen pale in comparison. She has been involved with at least six different men over the past two years. These affairs occurred not only during her so-called seminars, but also during short business trips, dinners, and other supposed work-related events. Meanwhile, I was at home, taking care of the kids and naively believing I was supporting her career. Some entries vividly describe how great these encounters were for her, all while expressing gratitude towards me for being a devoted husband and father without a single trace of remorse. This lack of guilt and the extent of her deception make me question her emotional and mental state. While reading through the diaries, I felt an overwhelming sense of despair and was seriously contemplating uninstalling myself. In the end, I sought refuge with friends for a few days as I felt I couldn't be alone, otherwise I'd do something that could never be taken back. They really supported me a lot during this time and helped me get in contact with a therapist. I'm now taking regular therapy sessions once per week. They also helped me in getting in touch with lawyers specializing in divorce. I'm also getting treatment for my STD as well. Returning home after picking up the kids from my in-laws was an emotionally devastating experience. I couldn't bring myself to smile at all. At some point, while contemplating all the possible ways I could end my life, my daughter just looked at me and saw my face. 
Without saying a word, she just came over and wrapped her arms around me. At that moment, I broke down, held her tightly and burst into tears in front of her. She's my sweet angel. And the shame of having considered leaving my kids to suffer under their mother's disdain was almost too much to bear. For the first few weeks after finding out, I could barely sleep at all and had to depend on sleeping pills just to get through the nights. My motivation was at an all-time low, affecting both my home life and my work. I forced myself to continue exercising and found out it was the only thing that actually made me feel better during this time. To whoever said in the previous post that I shouldn't give up on doing exercise, thank you. You may have just saved my life. The stress intensified after my wife returned from her trip. Initially, it took all my energy to hide my disgust at her and the knowledge I had gained about her actions. I've somewhat got used to this now, but it remains emotionally draining. She did notice that something was off, but still appears to believe that I am entirely unaware of what has transpired. Her lack of shame is staggering. Just recently, she asked me to buy her the expensive gift I promised her for our 10-year anniversary, for which I made an excuse to not buy yet. Despite her going into another business trip, just the day after our anniversary, which was described in extremely painful detail in her diaries. To make matters worse, she was even arranging to meet her latest partner on the day of my birthday. Nowadays I've started to feel a lot better, thanks to exercise and therapy. I had never been to a therapist before in my life, and to be honest, I am regretting not having done it sooner. Despite my wife betraying me in the worst possible way, part of me still thought that maybe all of this was my fault. Maybe if I had done this, if I had put more effort into that, I blamed myself for a lot of things. My therapist helped me see through it that, while I could have done some things differently, in the end, I cannot be held responsible for the actions she chose to take, and no one deserves to be betrayed in the way I was. If I'm at fault for anything, it's for blaming myself for everything, always putting her needs ahead of my own, and trusting her unconditionally without question. While it was extremely hard for me to balance work and looking after the kids alone every time she went on any of these trips, I always let her go after convincing myself that I was doing it for her, to support her business, to let her relieve stress from being at home, that this is what a supportive husband would do, and that if maybe I had a better job or made her happier, she wouldn't feel the need to escape from home. I'd be lying if I said I'm not depressed anymore, but I'm certainly doing much better these days. Nowadays, I feel more rage rather than sadness, and it is the rage that's keeping me going. My therapist advised me to channel this rage into the things I do, which has worked surprisingly well. I talked with two law firms about my situation, and was advised to collect more evidence, which I've been devoting myself to for the past few weeks. I've finished digitizing all of her diaries from the past two years, which were quite a lot. I got access to her computer and found just way too many photos, chat conversations, and documents to help my case. She's been posting all of her adventures into a very distorted private group in Facebook, to which I've also taken plenty of screenshots of. I've compiled a list of all of her sexual partners in the diaries and have been identifying them one by one on social media, etc. I've gathered everything I could on her current sexual partners, and manage to figure out where they live and or work. Now I'm debating whether I should confront them or not. The things I've read in these diaries are so bizarre that I thought maybe she was just writing material for some sort of twisted novel, that is, until I found all the other stuff in her computer etc. Maybe I'm broken myself as well, but a part of me is actually enjoying this process of gathering all these tiny pieces of evidence and information, cross-referencing them with her diaries and finding everything I can about her and her lovers. Part of me wants to see her burn on social media by posting directly everything I found out, since a big part of her business is centered around social media, but I'm refraining myself from doing so since this would also affect both me and the kids, as well as her parents, who have been nothing but kind to me since we got married. I'm also not sure if I should bring this to light to her parents as well, since this will probably devastate them. I'm planning on confronting her after talking further with the lawyers about how to make sure to gain custody of my kids. The country I live in has a rather unfair tendency of granting custody to the mother, even if she's unfit for it, setting the terms of the divorce and child support. In any case, thank you all for the advice. A few weeks ago, I was in full despair and had no idea what to do nor how to approach the situation. Nowadays, I feel that little by little I'm digging myself out of this hole I've been thrown into. Sorry if I don't respond to all your comments. Right now, my full attention is devoted to protecting my kids. Commenter 1. Well, let's hope you talk to your lawyer again soon. I'm not sure why you need more evidence, but you have plenty now. Have her served in public. Heck, even at a seminar she is supposedly at. Commenter 2. Don't confront. Don't let her know a damn thing until you have all of your ducks in a row. Don't post anything on social media. Don't confront any of her lovers. Just keep doing what you're doing. Let her find out when she's served. Commenter 3. 
what an absolute piece of shit your wife is. Document and keep gathering information to do everything you can to get full custody of your children. Do it for them. They'll grow up and come to understand that their mother is a mentally ill whore that destroyed their family. Keep going to therapy and see a psychiatrist and get on medication if they deem it needed. You need to keep your nerve in a level head as you go through this. Meanwhile, look up Grey Rock and 180. Update 2. Three weeks later I don't know where to even start. Things have escalated fast. I thought I was handling everything pretty well. Gathering evidence, working out, focusing on my kids, keeping things quiet. But life has this cruel way of blowing up even the best laid plans. Let me backtrack a bit. So, as advised, I didn't confront her. I stuck to the plan lawyers, more evidence, playing the long game. My wife continued her little charade, pretending everything was fine. She even suggested we start looking at vacation spots for the holidays. All while, according to her diaries, she was planning some weekend getaway with one of her lovers. The audacity was mind-blowing. Then came the bombshell. Out of nowhere, she came home early from another business trip. This was unusual. Normally, she would stay out late, claiming she had networking dinners or whatever. But this time, she walked in at 4 p.m. with a strangely intense look on her face. My stomach dropped. Something was off. I hadn't prepared for this. She just stood there for a second, eyes darting around the living room like she was trying to figure out what to say. Then she casually dropped it. I think we need to talk. Oh, so now she wants to talk. Now she's ready to communicate. After years of deception, I stayed calm, gave her a blank stare, and sat down. Inside, I was fuming. She rambled on about how she's been feeling lost and disconnected from herself, and how she's been considering life changes. Life changes? That's rich. Then she hit me with the kicker. She wants space to find herself. She's been feeling trapped in domestic life, and it's not my fault, but she's been thinking about separating for a while. The nerve. She actually sat there, trying to make herself the victim, as if I had been the one making her miserable. I had to bite my tongue so hard I thought it would bleed. The rage was bubbling up, but I couldn't blow my cover knot yet. I just nodded, told her I understood, and suggested we could work through it together, which she seemed to half-heartedly agree to before slipping off to run some errands. Once she left, I fell into a state of disbelief. Was she trying to gaslight me? Did she seriously think she could break up with me after everything I knew? Or was she planning to leave me for one of her lovers, hoping I just quietly agree? I couldn't hold it in anymore. I called my lawyer, gave him the rundown, and told him we needed to fast-track the process. The way she was talking, it felt like she was setting the stage for something big, like she had some next-level plan I wasn't privy to. We agreed that serving her divorce papers while she was still on her soul-searching journey might be the best course of action, but we had to do it smart. Here's where it gets wild. Two days after that conversation, I started noticing little things around the house. Subtle, but enough to get my attention some documents had been moved. My laptop felt off, like someone had been through it. Call me paranoid, but I started to get the sinking feeling that she might have known more than she was letting on. And then, out of nowhere, she hits me with this text while I was at work. We need to have a serious conversation tonight. You're not going to like what I have to say. My heart dropped. What did she know? I spent the rest of the day in a haze, trying to prepare for whatever this conversation was going to be, but nothing could have braced me for what was coming. That evening, after the kids were in bed, she sat me down, and without any emotion in her voice, she told me she knew everything. Everything. That I had been snooping through her diaries, her computer, taking pictures, gathering evidence she even had screenshots of my text with the lawyers. Apparently, she had installed some kind of spyware on my phone, tracking everything for weeks. I was stunned frozen. And then she just smiled. I guess we both have secrets, she said. That's when it hit me. This wasn't the same person I'd married. This woman sitting across from me was cold, calculating, and playing some twisted game. But what's her endgame? She didn't make any threats, didn't demand anything. She just stood up, grabbed her keys, and left. I have no idea where she went, and she hasn't come home since. I haven't slept since that night. I keep thinking. What's her next move? Is she planning to take the kids? Is she going to try and ruin me before I can serve her? Everything's spiraling out of control, and I'm stuck in the middle of this nightmare, trying to protect my kids from the storm I know is about to hit. My lawyer's working overtime now, but I can't shake the feeling that she's five steps ahead. Update 3. Two months later I didn't think it could get worse, but the last few weeks have been the most insane, exhausting, and terrifying days of my life. I've been holding off on posting until things settled, if you can call this settling, but here we are. Strap in. 
because this is going to sound like something straight out of a soap opera. But trust me, it's all real. Let's rewind to that night she walked out, casually revealing she knew everything. I didn't sleep for days, waiting for her next move. But nothing happened. No lawyers, no confrontation, no social media meltdown. Just radio silence. Then, one morning, I got a call from my lawyer, sounding more panicked than I'd ever heard him. She filed first. Yep. She beat me to it. Somehow, she had turned this whole situation on its head. Her petition painted a picture of me being the controlling, obsessive husband. She spun a whole narrative about how I was emotionally neglecting her, how I was invading her privacy, how I had been snooping through her things to control her. And here's the kicker. She was going after full custody of the kids, claiming I was mentally unstable and had anger issues. She even referenced the time our daughter saw me crying as some kind of proof that I was an emotional wreck. I was stunned. She twisted every vulnerable moment of mine into a weapon against me. My lawyer assured me that we had enough evidence to dismantle her claims, but the damage was done. She had officially declared war, and the legal battle had just begun. I didn't know what she was planning, but I knew she wasn't done yet. Sure enough, things escalated quickly. A few days after she filed, I came home to find her sitting in the living room, casually sipping coffee like she hadn't been MIA for days. She looked up, smiled, and said, we need to come to an agreement. Her tone was so cold, so detached, it sent shivers down my spine. She had no interest in a discussion. She laid it out for me, plain and simple. I'm moving out. I'm taking the kids with me. You can keep the house, but I'll need significant child support unless you want this to get messy in court. It was a threat, pure and simple. She wasn't just planning to take the kids. She was trying to ruin me financially too. I told her I wasn't agreeing to anything without going through my lawyer. And that's when she dropped the bombshell. I'm pregnant. I swear. The room spun for a second. Pregnant? We hadn't been intimate in months. There was no way the baby was mine. But she just stared at me, watching my reaction like a predator sizing up its prey. I'm assuming it's not yours, she added, almost as an afterthought, like she was talking about the weather. But that doesn't change anything. I'm still their mother and I'm still leaving. I don't know how I stayed calm, but I did. I walked out of the house, my hands shaking, and called my lawyer immediately. We needed to ramp things up. If she was pregnant with someone else's child, that could work in my favor for custody, right? But the courts don't move as fast as life does, and things were spiraling out of control faster than I could keep up. It wasn't long after that the real chaos started. One afternoon, while I was at work, I got a call from my neighbor my wife had shown up at the house with a moving truck. She was taking everything. Furniture, the kids' belongings, even personal stuff like photo albums. I raced home, but by the time I got there, most of it was gone. And the kids? Gone too. She'd taken them. That was my breaking point. I called the police, but they told me there wasn't much they could do without a court order. I contacted my lawyer, and we immediately filed for an emergency custody hearing. But until the court date, my hands were tied. She had the kids, and I had no idea where they were. It was absolute hell. For two weeks, I didn't sleep. I barely ate. I couldn't even look at the empty house without feeling physically sick. I kept getting cryptic texts from her nothing threatening, but just enough to remind me she was still in control. Things like, kids are doing fine, and we'll see you soon. It was psychological warfare. The court date finally came, and I'll never forget what happened in that courtroom. She showed up looking pristine, like the picture-perfect suburban mom. Meanwhile, I looked like I hadn't slept in days, because I hadn't. Her lawyer was ruthless, throwing every accusation in the book at me claiming I was mentally unfit, that I'd violated her privacy, that I'd been tracking her movements, ironic, given the spyware she used on me. They even tried to paint my therapy sessions as a sign that I was unstable. But here's where it all unraveled for her. My lawyer God bless him was prepared. We dropped the bombshell about her pregnancy, about the affairs, about the mountains of evidence I had gathered. The judge's face shifted as the truth came out, one piece at a time. The diaries, the Tinder profile, the trips, the screenshots. Her facade started to crack, and for the first time, I saw fear in her eyes. But the biggest twist? One of her former lovers had agreed to testify on my behalf. Turns out, she hadn't been as careful as she thought. He came forward, not out of loyalty to me, but because he had his own scores to settle with her. His testimony was the final nail in the coffin. The judge ordered immediate joint custody, and a full investigation into her actions was launched. I got my kids back that same day.